Y es que la gente lo sigue mirando, el estilo que sigue brindando, acabando, chocando, riendo, cosando, velando, sonido que mueve, la gente la pista se pone cabeza. La cual no se acaba, lo tengo en la mente, no quiero que siga los falsos atacantes, no se merece respeto. Yo quiero que apenas siga escuchando la fuerza que sigo moviendo, riendo, yo tengo el estilo que sigue brindando. ¿Qué? What's going on guys? K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great start to your week. Bitcoin having a massive, almost 20% rally off of the bottom. Now, why is this happening? Well, to be totally honest, we did have a very, very critical level of support right here, right? We spoke about the significance of this. We had this downward sloping trend right here, right? Which we did perfectly test that. And we had the top of this previous all-time high, perfectly coinciding, boom, and we got that bounce almost up 20%. Now, is it just because of the technicals? Well, I do think they had a lot to do with why we stopped there, but we had a lot of the USDC FUD, right? Currently, right now, you can see that USDC coin is basically back to about a dollar, right? It's at 99 you know, 0.9 cents, whatever. So it's basically back at a dollar. Now, why is this happening? Well, as you guys may have heard, no surprise, it looks like Silicon Valley Bank is in fact getting bailed out. Now, Joe Biden assures us and Secretary Treasury Yellen assur assures us that they're not going to start bailing all these different companies out and they're not bailing out the investors. They also claim that the money is not going to be coming from taxpayers. Um, it's coming from the deposit insurance fund. So, I guess we'll see who knows, you know, I guess they can pull that off. But nevertheless, this created a lot of positivity over the weekend leading into today. You could see Jeremy Allaire over at Circle was talking about 100% of deposits from the bank are secure and will be available. So again, all of the USDC is back one to one. So everybody panicked basically for no reason. And, you know, before we get to the charts, like Ryan Selk has pointed out, a regulated bank threatened the stability of a stablecoin before a stablecoin threatened the stability of a regulated U.S. bank. Every time Senator Warren defames the industry from now on, kindly remind her of this very public and verifiable fact. So... If that sounds good to you guys, we're gonna power through today's video. Wanted to give you a little bit of a setup. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Let's dive in and let's talk about it because, well, we're not out of the woods just yet. Tomorrow is CPI day, right? And you know, if those numbers come in hotter than expected, well, it might signal that the Fed is seriously gonna consider, you know, going even harder for even longer, which they've kind of already hinted at that. But again, guys, this is the beauty of the charts. And I have to just say, it's absolutely amazing. You could see we had this uh, resistance right here from uh, the 2017 high. And look at this. We had this little resistance here, right? For multiple weeks, multiple weeks, multiple weeks, finally broke out of it. Okay. Fast forward all the way over to here. What are we seeing? Support, support, support. Lost it, right? Uh, didn't even really get up there for the resistance. And boom, touched it again, guys. So beautiful, beautiful retest of two of some of the largest, largest, largest supports for Bitcoin. So, and I mean, you could see um, actually, if we, uh, I can't go lower without uh, changing it, but if you guys see right here, another perfect bounce off that 200 day, right? And we said we needed to stay above this, right? Because when Bitcoin does tend to go above it, it tends to stay above it for a relatively long time, right? And you can see we are back above the 50 as well. By the way, guys, if you do want to learn how to trade, just simply get subscribed to the channel. All this information is free, no charge courses, nothing like that. And if you guys want to take advantage of those bonuses below, make sure that you check that out. Check out my free tutorial popping up above. Um, so we did close the CME futures gap. Now, something that we need to discuss though, is that we actually opened another gap by closing this gap um, right here over the weekend. So <laughs> I know, I know. Technically, this gap is around 20 1,335. Now, because that was so close to the one that we just previously closed, does it count? I don't know, guys. We do know from history, though, that, uh, you know, these gaps do tend to get closed. But that being said, you can see right here on the futures, we are seeing, see this upward sloping trend right here, right here. You can kind of see that we are breaking through it, but we want, we want to make sure that we hold above that level. So, I mean, really, you know, you want to get back above, really, this $25,200 level, right? That was the level that we could not get above. We tried for two straight weeks, and we could not do it. What do we want to see on the on the, on the the lower time frame? Well, simply on the lower time frame, closing above 22008 which is basically this pivot right here, okay? And the next level where I would be looking right here would be on this upward sloping heart line, and that level is exactly at about 24140 So I would 
we could see a little bit of maybe like a little bit of stall right there. But ultimately, if we can break through 25.3, that would be great. But again, 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 I can't stress enough that we have major, 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 major levels of resistance. And, you know, we also have the 200. Let me go back to the 200 weekly. Uh, if I go to the weekly here, okay, look at this. So, you know, we are above this 50 on the weekly, but don't forget, we have this 200 right here, uh, which is very, very critical. And that's literally at about 25,340. So again, uh, I still hold the most important and critical level still being at about 25,300. Good news is on the daily, we did get our first green dot on market cipher. We also have confluence happening here on the wave edge indicator. So yeah, this is looking to me pretty good. And you know, if we do end up getting that trigger wave, then I would say that there is more potential chance of an upside move for Bitcoin. And even stocks have had a rally off of this level right here. Of course, stocks are now sitting below their downward sloping trend. So the S&P actually has a little bit more work to do than Bitcoin to get back above that trend. Um, the S&P really wants to get back above almost 4,000 even, really, uh, you know, to be back in, you know, bullish territory. But nevertheless, guys, crazy times. It is insane how fast these markets can move. And this is why you have to be careful with some of these news events. You know, people try to trade the news. You know, for, first, everything's getting, everything's collapsing. And then the next thing you know, they're bailing them out. Right. Again, though, again, just an advertisement for Bitcoin. And, you know, just to kind of end on this note, Grayscale has a 70 percent chance of winning the case uh, with the SEC. People are feeling a lot more uh, confident about that. And, you know, like Robert Kiyosaki says, bailouts begin more fake money to invade sick economy. Still recommending same response. Buy more gold, silver, Bitcoin. Take care crash landing ahead. And a lot of people still do not think that the Fed is going to be able to pull off that soft landing. We do have to see though, like I said, guys, tomorrow, you know, we're having a great day today, a nice green candle pump, but we do have to see what happens with the CPI data tomorrow. If it does come in, you know, unexpectedly high or not coming down fast enough, you know, who knows guys, we could, we could just see, we could, you know, we could see the gains get completely erased again, but I still ultimately, ultimately do remain bullish on Bitcoin long-term. And of course, short-term, as I did say, you know, even if we do get stomped down here, ultimately, I still believe that we could consolidate sometime into the middle of this year, which would be like the craziest, healthiest, accumulation period ever. And then I do believe that we would continue to the upside. But I know a lot of people are still in the doom and gloom camp and, you know, we got to keep going lower and the economy's falling apart. Um, but that's opinion. Obviously, we have to see how it ends. We don't we don't know how it's officially going to end. It's, it's kind of funny how it's almost backwards. You have the jobs report coming in positive, right? We're adding jobs to the economy and yet people are dumping stocks negative because then that signals that the Fed is going to raise rates longer and higher. So it's like they say they want a soft landing, but obviously they know that it, they kind of have to break something in order to, to put on the brakes. So as we can see right here, though, guys, very critical level, right? We're coming to this downward slope. So pay very close attention to that. If I see anything crazy in the charts, I will make sure to update you. So make sure you get subscribed, turn on the bell notifications. If you want, go follow me over on Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and all that. And by the way, the official links are below in this video. Don't ever go anywhere else. Like don't click random links. There's lots of scammers out there. The official links are below this video. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Hope you're having a great start to your week. You're awesome. I love you. Be safe. Until next time, stay crypto and make sure that you check out this video on how to trade. This is a decentralized exchange apex. I highly recommend it for safety and privacy. So that's it for me. Until next time, peace out.